Relationships are hard work. Once the honeymoon period is over, a relationship can present challenges that we didn't anticipate. However, relationships are beautiful and worth the effort if you have high emotional intelligence. Which is why today we're looking at 15 signs you're an emotionally intelligent couple. Number one, you make a conscious decision to be an emotionally intelligent couple. When we begin a relationship with someone, we are swept away by butterflies, fuzzy feelings, and let's not lie, pure desire. That speaking about the nitty gritty hard stuff doesn't really make an appearance until much further down the line, and often it can be too late. If we decide to sit down and discuss things like values, goals, how conflict should and can be managed, you have a much better grounding than couples that don't. And when problems do arise, which they will, you're in a better space to handle them from an emotionally intelligent point of view. Number two, they have positive bias toward their partners. Hey Luxers, we've all met people that speak down about their partners in such a negative way that you wonder why they're even together. It can be as subtle as rolling one's eyes when their partner says something they don't agree with to plain downright complaining about them. That is not relationship goals. Couples with high EQ always support each other, and even when they don't agree with the other, they won't be rolling their eyes or bad-mouthing them the moment their partner is out of earshot. Instead, they'll sit down and speak to their partner about it when they're alone. And that isn't easy, Aluxers. Calling out someone you love and having to listen to perhaps an equally hard to hear truth about yourself is difficult, but that's what works best so there's room to grow for both. And more on growth later on. Number three, you allow for healthy time apart. Emotionally healthy couples are not always together. They can see their own friends, commit to their favorite pastimes, go to the gym and spend time alone without the fear their partner will be jealous, resentful, will make you feel guilty or even play the victim. Time apart is exceptionally important in relationships, and if your partner is having problems allowing you that freedom, that can be challenging. Before throwing in the towel, delve into their past a bit and find out if they've been cheated on by a partner whom they trusted, and then were made to feel like they were at fault. Oftentimes, there's more to the story. And don't forget, we've got more videos for you released every day. Just click subscribe before moving on. Number four, each person actively seeks time to connect. Life can get insanely busy, with schedules that leave little time for breathing, let alone making additional time to connect. Throw in a few pets, some kids, work, housework, a couple of family members, and what's left at the end of the week? Not so much, that's for sure. Sanam Hafiz, a neuropsychologist in New York City and a faculty member in Columbia University's Clinical Psychology PhD program, spoke to NBC News and said, Emotional intimacy can be defined as allowing yourself to connect more deeply with your partner through actions that express feelings, vulnerabilities, and trust. Number five, you're not in the relationship for personal gain. We see people forge ahead with relationships for personal gain all the time. Whether it's publicity, financial gain, or even a pregnancy, people go into relationships for all kinds of the wrong reasons. An emotionally intelligent couple is not in a relationship to grab whatever they can and just up and leave. They want to benefit from the relationship, but together as a couple, not as a single unit. Decisions are based on how it will affect the couple. How does it benefit their relationship? Does it add value or take away? Does it add stress and anxiety or reduce it? And these conclusions can only be drawn up by having conversations, listening, and then being able to make a mutually beneficial decision. Number six, partners endeavor to see things from their partner's perspective. This is not easy to do, and we understand it takes a lot of effort, but if you're in the right relationship, you won't even flinch to put in that effort. Even if you are 100% right, Aluxers, which you will be at some times, proving your rightness to your partner is not going to appease the situation, and you're not going to feel better about yourself because you've managed to prove that you were right. 
By seeing the situation from your partner's perspective, think of this. They're probably struggling with being wrong, but your gloating or persistence on the wrongness is not making them feel any better or even willing to admit fault. Emotionally intelligent couples know this and do their best to see things from their other half's point of view. Number seven, they seek professional help when they can't manage a situation themselves. Even emotionally intelligent couples will face situations they're unable to fix by themselves, but instead of calling it quits, they seek the help of a professional. There's absolutely no shame in going to couples therapy. In fact, that's what healthy couples do. It proves that you're committed to the relationship and are working to do whatever it takes to move forward together. Even if you feel your relationship is going well, there's always room for improvement, and couples therapy is a safe place to do that. Number 8. They work toward becoming better people. Human beings are not born to be stagnant objects. We're meant to change, grow, learn, and improve. If your partner is not interested in changing, that can prove to be pretty problematic in any relationship. If only one person in the relationship is focused on growth, they're going to surpass their partner quickly and eventually the couple will have nothing in common. Japanese martial artist and founder of Aikido, Morihei Ueshiba, once said, if we stop growing, technically and spiritually, we're as good as dead. And hey, Luxers, if you're thinking all of these points do not define the relationship you're in, we've got 15 more in our video, 15 Signs the One You're Dating Isn't the One. Number nine, kindness is the underlying driving force. The Atlantic says the secret to love is kindness. Psychologist John Gottman did an interesting study where he looked at newlyweds and could, with 94% accuracy, predict whether the couple would remain married. His findings were solid across any relationship, gay, straight, rich, poor, black or white. He invited 130 newlyweds to spend the day at a beautiful retreat. He observed them and made the following observation and explains it with this example. A husband sees a beautiful bird and asks his wife to look. Either she indulges him or is annoyed that he interrupted her. The husband not only wants his wife to see the bird, but he needs to see that she acknowledges what is important to him. No surprises, the wife that didn't look at the bird meant the relationship wasn't built to last. It all boiled down to the spirit that each person brought into the relationship, and kindness was the driving force. Number 10. When you have issues, your partner is the first person you talk to. If you're going through a hard time, who do you go to first? Your partner or your friends? If you're unable to go to your partner first, that's usually a red flag as emotionally intelligent couples are able to trust their problems with their partners. And if the problem is with your partner, then communication is the only way to remedy it. And there are simple ways that having those hard conversations can be made easier. Don't talk down to your partner. Don't interrupt them. Pick up their nonverbal cues. Don't drone on and on and reach an agreement that you can both move forward with. If having a difficult conversation doesn't bring a common closure or move in the right direction, that's when you seek professional help. Number 11. Remember when fighting, it's you and your partner against the problem. Not you against your partner. It's a different way of looking at it, we know, but when you see it from this perspective, it makes the fight a lot less confrontational and a whole lot quicker to find a solution. According to Time.com, fighting with a partner is healthy for a relationship. In fact, relationships that fight are healthier than the relationships that don't. Where there's no fighting, often the flame is just gone out and the couple just doesn't care anymore. Clinical psychologist Deborah Grody says, relationships that can't be saved are relationships where the flame has completely gone out or it wasn't there in the first place. Number 12, you have a deep friendship. Aluxers, if you're treating your friends with a lot more kindness, fun, and giving them the best bits of you but not your partner, that's a tricky balance in a relationship. 
Emotionally intelligent couples save their best parts for their partner. They go out of their way to please them, to make them feel good, to let them know they're appreciated, loved, and valued. They nurture the friendship as much as they do the physical side of the relationship. Because as we all know, the physical attraction can fade over time. But hanging out with your partner, aka best friend, is there for life. And that's what you're striving for. Number 13. Respect all of your partner the good, the bad, and the downright annoying. Because the truth is, no relationship is perfect. Even the healthiest couples irritate the crap out of each other sometimes, but they both realize that this is their home, their safe place. Mexican author Don Miguel Ruiz allegedly said, respect is one of the greatest expressions of love. And whether he did or didn't say it, it's a quote worth mentioning. Emotionally intelligent couples respect their partner in their entirety. Number 14. You make time for fun. Having fun is such an important part of a relationship, but it's the part that tends to be neglected when the monotony of a long-term relationship kicks in. Routine is expected, but emotionally intelligent couples will set a date to have a date. They'll go roller skiing, have a picnic, a hike, or visit a museum. Things that don't even cost a lot of money. They just make time for some fun. And if you can get away, we love Airbnb. We always use it on our travels, so we partner with them to give you a discount. Go to alux.com slash Airbnb and get $25 off your first trip. Number 15. You say thank you and I'm sorry. Hey Luxers, a simple thank you goes a long way in a relationship. You feel appreciated and valued when your partner acknowledges what you've done. Saying sorry isn't easy sometimes, but it changes lives. Couples that can apologize and then take action to correct their mistakes are couples that are emotionally intelligent. Goalcast.com says that saying sorry denotes that you've chosen your relationship over your ego. Which brings us to our question today, Aluxers. When did you last say sorry, and how did it positively affect your relationship with that person? Share with us in the comments and enrich our community. Now, you stuck with us until the end, of course, we've saved a bonus for you. We don't all fall in love with someone who's on the same EQ level as ourselves, but that doesn't mean the relationship has no future. How you handle it can significantly increase the chance of a relationship thriving. When communicating with your partner, process exactly what you want to achieve from that conversation. Make sure there's no room for confusion or misinterpretation. Make sure you pick the right time to talk. Don't pack on additional pressure if one is rushed or already distracted. If your partner is defensive, show that you understand their concerns and work toward finding a common solution. Use I feel messages often. And lastly, we encourage you to go to therapy regardless of problems or not. You'll both benefit from the sessions, which in the end is a winning formula all around. Thanks for watching today, Aluxers. Don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe for more videos.